Hi, this is Zoe from Belvoir Bedford. And as you know, we've been talking to local businesses in the community about how they feel about lockdown and just about what their business is and what they have to offer and how as a community we can support them. And I'm really pleased today to have Rosanna with us who runs the store in St Cuthbert Street. So hi Rosanna, um, you're the lady that runs the store and um, before we get into the nitty gritties of that, do you just want to tell the people of Bedford a little bit about yourself? Yeah sure, so um, I grew up in Milton Keynes and moved to Bedford when I was 18 so I've been here uh, just over 10 years now in Bedford. Absolutely love it. I didn't love Bedford when I first moved here. I really couldn't find many things that I really did like about it, but um, definitely found the, the things that make Bedford amazing and fell in love with it over the years and definitely feels like it's home now. And it was in the summer 2019 that I opened the store and it was really important for me to open a business in Bedford um, despite what multiple people had um, advised me when I was thinking about opening a business like the store and um, they all advised that I didn't do it in Bedford that I went to Olney or Milton Keynes or oh. Cambridge and um, more affluent towns and cities uh, where something like this could have more of a chance of thriving but I think local community local economy is really important to me and I'm I call Bedford my home and I think there's so much value in it and building it up and um, so that's why it was so important for me to open it in my hometown and not just somewhere where I think where people thought it could be profitable. Yeah. Um, so that's really important to me. Community is important um, and local and independent. Um, I love sort of the social life. I love socialising. I'm not a workaholic, even though when you You've open your own business, it takes up all the hours. The work-life so. balance right then is, you know, that's what you say. Oh, 100%. I love... Um, and I think creating a town that you want to spend time in as well as work in is yeah. really important for me and one of my personal goals. Um, so yeah, I love traveling and I love um, reading and eating well and eating out um, and I love business. So before we get into what the store's all about, you said that you, you sort of found the love of Bedford. What was it that changed yeah. your outlook there? What made you sort of go from a doubter to someone that's now sort of obviously very passionate about the town? What, what, what changed? What made you change your mind? <clears throat> it was very much not one specific thing. Like suddenly we didn't get a really nice restaurant that I really liked. It was um, the concept of learning to love where you live. And um, I, I think that you can make wherever you are amazing if you just love where you live and find what you love about it. And I figured, you know, this is where I was staying. This is where I was working. This is where I was living. I don't want to just go around hating it all the time. I want to find the beauty, find the gold, find the good. And I think once you start looking, um, you can find it. And I always say to people, like, if you can find it in Bedford, you can literally find it anywhere. Yeah. Um, and I think then I really started to find things that I loved about it. And then it wasn't hard to find at all. Suddenly I was like, oh, my gosh, I love this place. And I think the, the main thing I really love about Bedford is its independent spirit. It's um, independent vibe. And there's loads of like independent shops and lots of people yeah. actually trying to make this a better town. Yeah. And not just people that you see lots of different sides of people, depending where you are. But <clears throat> I just found a great community of people that actually wanted to make it a better place and were doing just that. They were opening businesses, they were starting groups, they were starting social things and events. And I just found that there was actually really good people in Bedford. And lots of people say that when they come, that the people of Bedford are actually really nice and they're yeah. very friendly. Someone said, and I think the size of our town is good. Yeah, someone said, him. Yes, so I was chatting to someone yesterday and they called it a rainbow town, which I thought was quite a nice oh. way of describing us, you know. As a, yeah. bearing in mind we're all, we're all very different but we all come together I think that's quite a nice way yeah. of describing the town anyway yeah. the store please tell us about that for anyone that doesn't know anything about it well they should but you know for anyone that doesn't <laughs> explain so the store is um Bedford's first refill shop <clears throat> and a refill shop or zero waste shop as they're sort of collectively known is a shop that uh, where you can buy food and goods without any of their packaging and you can just refill them so you can bring your own jar or bag and just refill food straight from dispensers you can scoop it out or you can pull down handles and um, fill up your own jars and the whole concept and idea behind it 
is to help encourage people to shop differently that we don't need all this excessive packaging which we all know is bad for the planet um, and getting people to rethink not just the consumer culture but actually repurpose refill reuse repair keep doing keep reusing everything let's just not throw away this whole throwaway culture has to stop um and so i was very passionate about it and very passionate about business and local and I think I just brought all of those things together to open a shop that would help um, help people reduce their waste and make a difference. I mean one of the things that obviously people always say about these types of shops is that they are more expensive what would you say to the doubters is that entirely true or is it something that maybe in the short term it might seem that way but in the long term actually yeah. I mean, it's how you define expensive, isn't it? Because, you know, we're talking about the planet. Yeah. You know, it's a completely different ball game. But what would you say to anybody that's like, well, not, I'm not sure about that? Yeah, I think it's a great question. And one of my favourite questions, because when I first thought about opening, someone said to me, are you even going to be any cheaper, though? How can you even beat Lidl? Yeah. And I was like, because that's not my point. I don't want to be cheaper. I, I want to be better. And I think that's the whole point. I'm not trying to beat like but get the best price on everything I'm trying to get the best quality um, and actually sometimes the best quality is cheaper um, and lots of my products are cheaper than a regular supermarket just because they're void of packaging however lots of my products are organic or um, they've been ethically or sustainably manufactured which means that we're going straight to farms directly straight to people not through um, some really dodgy and yeah. illegitimate ways we're actually looking after people and paying fair wages we're actually replanting trees when we harvest them and we're re giving back to water schemes and i think i'm working with companies that are actually when they're making a product they're considering their whole life cycle about that product and that makes things more expensive and if that makes it more expensive then i'm hope i want to educate people about you know, it might be more expensive here, but it's worth it because it's the cost of the planet is what we're saving. Yeah. Oh, no, and, you know, I think here, can... yeah, but our children might, yeah. you know, and we've got a plan for the future, haven't we? And this is probably one of the yeah. ways. But it is, it is like, it is just a re-education. I cannot expect people to go from expecting to pay what maybe one pound that yeah, they're used to paying one pound for something to suddenly paying, say, three pounds. It is a jump. And I think I'm not expecting anybody to just get that but instead I want to help educate to say why it's more expensive or why it maybe isn't. Um, I think across the board, I'm probably um, more in line with uh, Sainsbury's or just underneath Waitrose um, when I've done my sort of product price comparisons. Um, and whether you go the organic version and the non-organic version, um, but some things, yes, they are cheaper. Um, and then there's the things like homeware and um, we all, well, in terms of organic, the reason we do it is because the lack of pesticides and chemicals that they use in food production and it doesn't contaminate our water. It's the same with like products like deodorants and face creams and things. That's important that they're not tested on animals. It's important that they're not using harsh chemicals, that they're better for our body, better for the planet. What's the life cycle of the product? What's going to happen to uh, the packaging that it, when it's finished? What happens then? And actually all of those things considered makes a product more expensive when you're actually consciously making something, you are paying more for it. But I think my whole concept is if you can just buy better and buy less, um, that's what I'm trying to encourage people to do. Brilliant. So obviously you said you sort of set up in 2019, so you've probably not had much time since we got hit with this pandemic in March. How's, how's it been for you since sort of March onwards? Uh, initially, did you have to close or were you classed as essential at the time yeah. you know, in the first um, lockdown? So we opened the 31st of August. So we had September, October, November, December, 2019. Everything's fine. Our first time opening a new product, new shop, crazy. It was really well received and it went really, really well. Um, starting again in January, that was my first January post Christmas wondering a sales in the job, what happens, like this was my first year trading. January was fine, February was great and then March, um, by the end of February we started to see the panic buying um, patterns emerge 
and throughout March we had a. I, I heard you had month. toilet roll. <laughs> <laughs> For a hot mess there, we had the toilet roll. <laughs> um, it was like anything, anything, I, nothing I'd seen before. It was crazy. crazy. Um, yeah. March was was for sure panic buying. And and actually I did a post on my Instagram that we're not about panic buying. We're not a consumer culture. We don't, I'm not going to allow you to buy everything off the shelves. There yeah. will be limits and we will be about fair and making sure ev there's enough to go around because there is. Um, and so March was very, very high and very busy. And things like um, I had a waiting, oh no, that was maybe April. I had a waiting list for um, bread flour, plain white flour, self-raising flour, eggs, uh, toilet roll so that when certain items would come back in stock um, we were actually texting out and emailing out letting people know <laughs> when certain items would be back in stock and we had not done that before yeah and um, I knew that that wasn't going to be something that normally would happen but I mean who, when does that ever happen in normal life that you text someone we've got bread flour back in stock <laughs> coming in a kilo um, but at the same time, it was amazing because we were working directly with mills and farms and directly with egg farms. And um, so actually, because we don't package things, we didn't have a shortage of any of these things. So, And the reason that um, flour was so hard to come by was because of they couldn't get the bags. It was about the individual bags that they shipped from China and other places. They shipped the so bags from China. Blimey, that's There's crazy. like a whole shipping process and manufacturing process and um, they couldn't source the packaging. Um, but because I was getting mine in the big 25 kg sacks anyway, it wasn't a problem for me. And so actually it worked out in my favor. And same with the eggs, because they were local and we don't sell them in the boxes anyway. Um, so that worked out really well. Um, and then we stayed open throughout the lockdown. We didn't close, we, we were classed as essential. So I was very grateful for that. Yeah. Um, our footfall dropped obviously by over two thirds. Um, people were still using it as their outing and, and we have to remember it was super hot during the first lockdown. Yeah. And so it was nice because um, people were just going on their walks um, and picking up a few bits here and there, but it was so, so, so quiet. It was like a ghost town in, in St. Cuthbert Street. I mean, just walking around town, it was so, so yeah, quiet. Yeah, it's like 28 days later. Didn't... Oh my gosh, it was crazy. But um, I, we um, opened the online click and collect shop with um, my friend Ben and he helped me sort of get something quickly up and running so that people could order online, which was a lifesaver and kept us afloat during those times, which was incredible. Um, and actually at the same time, I got to know a lot of the other businesses on the street when they were coming in and cleaning and just like, you know, redecorating and things. It was a really like quiet moment there. And it was, um, we, ha we all had no idea what was going to happen, but it was quite a moment. Yeah. So obviously lockdown too, has that been a, a, very different or would you say it's pretty much the same for you? I mean, we've been lucky, we've carried on as an industry, but yeah. is it, do you, have you seen the difference? Is, would you say it's better this, this second time or? This second lockdown hasn't really felt like another lockdown. It certainly wasn't the first, like the first. Um, it was, I think, fear mongering at the start. There was a lot of fear, but I think everyone's been like, oh, actually, it's just kind of like what we've been doing before. We just can't really see people. Yeah. Um, but it's been different because a lot of the other businesses on the road have been open, but for takeaway only or so there's been the footfall. It has dropped marginally, but um, actually people are still wanting to do their walks. People still want to support local and get their independent coffee and they want to come up and down the street. And so actually it's been fine. And also then we're in the lead up to Christmas and people are still wanting to buy um Christmas and we have a lot of obviously dried foods that helps that people can buy them earlier than the Christmas rush um, so people have been preparing for that so I think for us it's pretty much leveled out with our online sales went back up again and footfall slightly dropped so I think we've sort of just leveled out but it's been fine and, and to be honest it's not felt that different if not some weekends have been busier than maybe a month ago yeah so obviously um Throughout all of this, how have you managed to stay positive? Uh, you know, if you give any advice to people of Bedford, how, how have you kept going and kept cheerful during all of this? I think um, I, I rely a lot on the support of my friends and family. And if you don't have your own network of people, 
just start mapping that out and find out who your people are and who can you call on when you need help and you know there's been days and and forgetting about the business side personal life as well and how you deal with the pandemic and the effects of that um there are just days where you just don't want to turn up to work and it's really hard and having people to call on to say i need help and i've got some wonderful friends where i've been able to call and say i need help today would you would you come into the store with me and just be there um being in community for me being around people gets me out of my own head and helps me have a laugh with people and just yeah. makes things a little less serious um love making pranks love doing like jokes on people i love sort of trying to lift my own spirits try not take things too seriously and if I find that maybe reading the news or listening to stories or reading Facebook it doesn't help and so taking a break from that and I've done a lot of um probably overindulging but a lot of treats I try and do little things every other day and for me it's been just getting myself a nice coffee from Vanilla Tree or um a cake from the gallery or uh, something like that just to enjoy something to enjoy about that day um and I think the main thing for me is being grateful. I mean, it's it's easy to do three things, but just trying to do one to three things every morning or every day. What am I grateful for today? And sometimes it's really hard to find, but once you start doing it, you're actually, it's kind of like when I started looking about what do I love about Bedford because I just keep hating it. You actually, it does change you and it does yeah. change your, your spirit and your mood. So for everybody that's listening out there now, how, you know, because obviously you must have a client base. For anybody that's mm -hmm. not really been to the store or is like now thinking about it, what, what, you know, how can you entice them in? What can you say to them to get them through the door or not through the door and just <laughs> shopping online to know how they feel about it? I think um, I've got a real big selection of products um, that I think will challenge your thinking and will make you think, oh, I didn't know that or oh I didn't know why that's vegan why would deodorant be vegan what tell me more about that or there's lots of things that will get you thinking about how things are made and you things you didn't realize about other products when you see them presented differently mm -hmm. uh, we also have a peanut butter machine and it makes fresh peanut butter when you press a button so bring a jar put it <laughs> under the machine button and out comes fresh peanut oh, butter gosh, peanut and it is, is it crunchy or smooth is it crunchy or smooth? It's smooth, but it's thick. It's not creamy, but it's like thick, smooth, oh, hot, gosh. fresh peanut butter. It wow. is so good, so so good. And that's a um, that's a big fun feature. Kids love pressing the big yeah. green button to make the peanut butter come out. I mean, and I assume so the other adults, thing, yeah. yeah. And I assume the other thing is if someone does come into the shop, and they you will know the answer to any questions that they may have about particular products. Whereas if you just go into a supermarket. They're not going to have a clue, are they? You know, you obviously seem to know where they're coming from and who's providing them, you, you know. It's and, quite a task because pe people will ask. They yeah. will say, where does this product get made? Where is it shipped from? What's the packaging? What is this? Is this material in this type of packaging? How is it stored? What temperature? They will ask all the questions. And yes, it's it's fortunate. I do know a lot about the products and I am the, I do know because that is, is my shop, but and it's like training my staff as well and um she's absolutely fantastic but it's like there's actually so much to know and she knows like they asked me this question i have no idea i'm like that's a, that's a different question i don't even know but um there is a lot to learn but also personal recommendation as well when people are switching to um a different type of product or instead of using a disposable razor to a stainless steel razor or a safety razor let me give you my top tips on how to make this easy let me tell you exactly how to use it um and that's what you get in an independent shop you mm -hmm. get personal recommendation you get feedback you get help you get support and i think there's you just don't get that in yeah i honestly think also. we're at a tipping point at the moment aren't we and i think yeah. if anything now is the time for us all to be thinking about making a change to our lives and i think if anyone's like on the fence now now is the time to get off it I. Right? that's my understanding that's my belief is that yeah. we need to make a difference we need to make a change and now this you know what's happened to us this year is a wake-up call I think I'm not saying the pandemic's anything to do with packaging but I think it's all sort of one big thing isn't it and I do believe that people mm -hmm. need to sort of take that leap of faith now don't they and just give it a go it is crucial and I think everybody's waking up to realizing this is we're, we're already too late to this problem but um it's a collective effort and I think the one thing I'll finish with is that it's not about 
one person going completely waste free and eco friendly and becoming a total activist. It's about millions of people doing lots of little things. And my favorite little line is when, um, it's this little quote that said, it's just one straw said 8 million people. And yeah. then you just realize everybody can make a difference. And yes, we need to make lots of them, but we just need a lot of people on board doing lots of little things to help build this momentum. So don't think for a second, you need to become sort of eco warrior, just come in and just switch, buy a water bottle, don't, they take away cups, you know, do one switch um, and then just see if you can build it whenever you've got the margin to. But we do need to make a massive call and we do need everyone to play their part. And so just find what you can do. Well, thank you so much for your time today, because I know you've got to go in and you've got a lot on and you're really busy. What we will do is obviously when I drop this into the Internet, I'll put all your sort of links to your website and your Facebook and all, all that so everybody can can get to, get to you. But in case they... I'm just curious, just remind everybody where you're located. So we're in the St Cuthbert's Arcade on St Cuthbert Street, which is just parallel to the High Street. Yeah, so obviously they can go for a lovely walk down the embankment and then just pop in on the way through. 